Miracy. So when I was able to meditate every morning, I became very calm and strong. I was not intending to die. I knew it wasn't really my time. And I had other things to do. Hello, I'm Katie Valentine, and you're listening to Soul Savvy Business. I am a soul-minded spiritual entrepreneur, a Christian minister, and a New Testament scholar. Don't let any of that scare you. I support all paths to the divine, and I use tools like chakras, dreams, and intuition to get there. On this podcast, we explore the intersection of business and spirituality. What do I mean by that? Too often, we separate our business selves from our spiritual selves. But in doing that, we don't leverage the full potential of either one. This series aims to help you fall in love with your own soul so that you can live your most fulfilling and successful life. On today's episode, I'll be talking with an executive business coach with quite a story to tell. And I'm also going to do a short intuitive reading with her around her business. But first. In every episode, I offer a tip around abundance and your spiritual journey. Today's abundance tip comes from some recent work and training that I'm doing, specifically shamanic training. Although I've been a spiritual teacher and a guide for many years, I really am a true lifelong learner, hence my recent year-long foray into shamanism. So today's tip is for you to find somewhere to be a student. My shamanic training is fantastic, partly because I do love to learn, and I'm a true non-expert in this class. We're talking about spiritual things, but not in a way that I've ever done before. What does this have to do with abundance? I know you're an expert in your field, but you're also a human being with curiosity, questions, and areas where you're not an expert. And sometimes it's fun to put on our learner hats and show the universe that we're willing to be vulnerable and put ourselves in spaces where we can be the student. I'm not talking about the course to make yourself a better social media mogul for your business or ways to improve your SEOs. I'm talking about the stuff that is just for you that may have an impact on your business, but mostly just brings you joy. It's fun to be a beginner, and it also reminds you of where your clients are when they start to work with you. And it keeps that loop of abundance nice and snappy by showing abundance you're willing to put yourself in the position of being a student again. My guest today is Patricia Dent. Patricia is a business coach with a passion for helping heart-centered entrepreneurs. She loves working with startups and people with a passion for purpose. Welcome to the show, Patricia. Thanks, Katie. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad that you're here too. And I'm curious if anything resonated with you on the tip of becoming a ground zero learner. Ground zero learning is, I think that's huge in two ways. First of all, I'm always training because if you don't train and keep up with things, you don't know. And those are those business things that you were talking about. But I also love to exercise, you know, my curiosity and see what's out there to learn. It keeps you, well, it keeps you grounded, doesn't it? And it certainly allows you to go back to that beginner mindset. That's so important. Yeah, the beginner mindset. That's a great way to phrase it. Lovely. Well, so Patricia, I love to ask each guest, What is the word or the words that you use to describe whatever it is you consider to be the divine? Do you use words like God or universe or divine, or is it at another layer for you? I usually use the word universe more often so as to be practiced at being neutral when I talk to other people, because I don't want to negate anybody else's belief. But that for me is the word that just, it's intention, because I operate a lot with feeling. I have a lot of intuition around things. And I find when I give full reign to my intuition, then words aren't necessary. And I think you can't have um, near-death experiences, nor can you have the wonderful um, gifts that the universe brings without knowing that there is a universe out there or there is a divine out there and you are the beneficiary of it. 
Yes, and I, I love your wording the, that we're the beneficiary of this divinity that's running throughout the universe. So Patricia, tell us a little bit about what your religious and spiritual upbringing looked like, if anything. Well, I was raised in a very traditional family, and we were Presbyterian. And I don't know whether that's uh, everywhere, in the Presbyterian church, but it was pretty conservative. And uh, we, went to, we went to Sunday school, we went to church, we believed in God, but religion was kind of at arm's length in some ways. I don't know if that makes sense. There were rules to follow. There were beliefs that we subscribed to. Did I maintain that throughout uh, my total upbringing? Not as a teenager so much. It was more as I reached adulthood that I decided what my own definition of the divine was. And then it became obvious to me. There was more to religion than just attending church on Sunday. Well, tell us a little bit how you got from that young adulthood to that realization. I believe we don't always pay enough attention to the coincidences in our lives. But when you desire to have something, when you wish for it with all your heart, when you want to do good in the world and you find that good comes back to you, I believe that's the divine. I believe that we don't necessarily construct our own lives. I believe that we are meant to be doing certain things. And when everything works and falls into place, when you have opportunities that appear for you, when you end up um, really being able to get back to your community, then I believe that living in that way allows you to have more opportunities, more more um, manifestations, if you will, of the divine. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. It totally makes sense. Um, very not Presbyterian. So I can see where there might have been a bit of a disconnect for you in your <laughs> very <laughs> in your early 20s. <laughs> very not Presbyterian. <laughs> well, you know, you alluded earlier to, you said it kind of flat out, near-death experience. And you've kind of set us up with this reciprocity of doing good and wishing for things and having that good reflected back to us. So I wonder if you can tell us about um, this personal challenge, this experience, and how that shaped your spirituality. Okay, that's, that's a great question. I was just straightening up my clothing to get outside and be all gussied up to go out for dinner. And I discovered a lump in my breast. And it was large. I was a little surprised. And I stopped and I said to my husband, well, I have a lump. Obviously, he was a bit shocked. I'd had them before, but this one was a little different. It felt a little different. And then I said, you know what? No lump is going to stop me from having my birthday dinner. Um, so I will take care of it tomorrow. And we went out for dinner. And I tried to ignore it, but it, it wasn't something that I was meant to ignore. So the next day I did go to an urgent care center and I uh, asked them to check this out and do what we had to do. Well, I watched the doctor's eyes. He was an older doctor. And I watched his pupils just dilate quickly when he had, was palpating the lump. And I thought, oh, I may be in trouble here. And then what they said was, well, we're going to, we're going to send you to the local hospital to do some testing. And I went in and did an ultrasound. And then they did a biopsy because they actually found two lumps. So it had metastasized. It turned out it was cancerous. And I was I'm not prepared for that particularly. But I went to see this surgeon and she did an exam. She did everything the other surgeon had done when I was with her. And she said, well, I can't operate on this. I'd never get it all. I said, get what? She said, you have inflammatory breast cancer in addition to the lumps. And as it turned out, it's a very rapidly spreading cancer that goes cell by cell. It doesn't take the time to create a lump. It just keeps traveling over all of the cells. So she said, you need, to get, you need to have chemo. You need to see an oncologist. Wait here. Don't go away. I'm going to get you in tomorrow morning, first thing. And she did. And I ended up having four months of chemo and then surgery because I had a mastectomy. And then I had radiation. So that was my next eight months. That was eight or nine months of treatment. After having just bought a business, <laughs> you can imagine, but interestingly, one of my, I guess I would call her a guru, a little bit of a guru. She said, 
you must meditate. <laughs> and I go, okay, I'll try to meditate. I hadn't really done any thoughtful meditation or really hadn't thought deeply about the spiritual part of my life at that point. But as it turned out, I was being looked after every step of the way. Yes, I had a terrible disease, but I got the help I needed just in time. And throughout the whole process, everything fell into place. And so when I was able to meditate every morning, I became very calm and strong. I was not intending to die. I knew it wasn't really my time. And I had other things to do. So that I think that determination, that communing with the universe, that settling of my own heartbeat, my heart racing, and um, taking care of myself were really important. And as it turned out, almost 10 years later, in my oncologist's practice, there is nobody else who has the same results that I have. Completely gone after quite serious episodes of cancer. So I'm incredibly grateful. Incredibly. This is such a story. And I'm curious now, after this experience with meditation, and if I'm remembering correctly, did you also receive Reiki? I did receive Reiki. Yeah. And I'm just curious how maybe this impacted your spirituality, how it shaped your spirituality or changed it? I believe that I stopped ignoring my surroundings, my beliefs, because I was very focused on business. I really was. I was, I just bought a business. I was on a mission. But one of the differences it made was it made a total difference to the way I live my life. So when you start paying attention to what's happening to you, then I think you can make connections between your belief system, what you believe is happening, your mindset, the positivity you have, your um, expectation for the future. And I really believe that it changed the way I feel about spirituality. I would never have said, Katie, you know, to my early students, well, you know, I believe that the universe is looking after us. I would never have said that out loud. And now, 10 years later, I have heart-centered spiritual people in my practice. They are very consistent because I pay attention, because I'm attracted to these people and they to me. And I don't make the mistake of not choosing my community. And I'm curious how the practice of meditation and maybe receiving the energy of Reiki, how do you feel that was formative for you? I believe it was, it was formative in two ways. It was allowing me to connect with my inner self and to really uh, become less distracted by what was going on in the outside world. Reiki was particularly beneficial because I was so fortunate as to have three or four women who belonged to a Reiki circle who would help me every single week while I was going through treatment. I ended up training in Reiki One, although I haven't always applied it. I'm hoping to apply it to my husband, who's also been diagnosed with cancer and uh, more of a blood-borne disease that's more long-term. But um, I find that it has changed my approach. And certainly it's that quiet peace that you have inside that I think is make, making a difference. Thank you. So lovely. And I can assure you as a Reiki master teacher that the Reiki energy never goes away. So you only need to reawaken it. <laughs> uh, just have that attention that's, that's that it flows. <laughs> just reacquaint yourself with it and it will be right there. And one of the nicest gifts I, in my experience of Reiki is that we can offer it to ourselves as well as to others. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is such a gift when we're well, when we're feeling unwell, when we're in alignment, when we feel like we're not in alignment, um, as well as being able to offer it to others. So I, I love that that inspired you to become a Reiki One person. It really did. And, you know, there's lots of distractions when you're running a business and trying to grow it. There are lots. And the trick is, I think, not to always be so absent from your mind and your heart and your soul that you don't pay attention to the things that matter. And just to demystify maybe Reiki a little bit for anyone out there, this is not an episode all about Reiki. It's just come up um, naturally uh, as in our conversation, right. is that Reiki does offer healing energy, and it's not up to the Reiki practitioner to determine if that's curing energy. Right. That's really between the energy and the person receiving it and the divine. 
Right. Well, um, this is such an inspiring story with such a wonderful outcome. And I'd like to switch gears just for a moment. And sure. let's talk a little bit about beliefs and money, especially as an entrepreneur and um, as you become more heart-centered and worked with heart-centered people. I ask each guest very similar questions, but I'm really curious for you, Patricia, if your spiritual experiences, if your spiritual religious beliefs influence the way you think about money or abundance. That's a really good question. I know from my experience as a trainer and as a coach that so many people, when they are not in an abundant mindset, are struggling. They're struggling with scarcity. They don't necessarily believe in themselves. And it really translates to money as well. So scarcity with money is probably one of the most common things I see. And I just don't want to be a part of that. Um, it was when I was younger. We, I was raised in a very perfectionistic and very scarcity-minded household. And what I hope to do is, is actually help others to leave that behind and leave the worry behind and trust that they're going to receive the guidance and help that they need so that they can make the money that they need as well. And it's almost as simple as that. I think my values have changed. Oh, do I need lots of money? No, I do not. Do I need enough? Yes. But um, I have more trust in the universe, I think, as a result of not having to panic or be transactional. There's two thoughts that are occurring to me. And one is that through all of these experiences, you really became the spiritual learner. Yes. Like what we talked about, that abundance stuff we talked about at the very beginning, you became the spiritual learner and allowed yourself to receive. Yes. The second thing that occurred to me is when you talked about, you used the words of the not being so transactional with the universe. And it made me think in any kind of relationship, marriage, romantic, even friendships, people who bean count the relationship, it's just deathly. You know, I, I did this chore. You have to do this chore. I did this chore. You know, we can't, it has to be equitable, but we can't, we can't sit there and bean count. I mean, it will destroy the relationship. And the same, I think the same thing is true of the universe. If we bean count with the universe, it'll deliver us beans. Absolutely. Yeah. If we don't do that, we get showered with, with much more, you know, with the whole gourmet meal. Exactly. I love that image. If you want to make your life transactional, really, it's such a limiting life. Well, Patricia, tell us about your coaching business and the fabulous people who you serve. I serve these amazing people. And what I've found is if when you leave that selection process in the hands of the universe, then you find the people who really you love to serve. And I love to serve people who, as I said, who are heart-centered. But interestingly, they have a greater purpose, all of them, in what they're doing. So they they have a business that is, you know, a business. For example, we have a paralegal. You know, the legal business is um, pretty constrained in some ways. And yet she wants to help families and she wants to give back to her community as well. And I have a, I have a wonderful person from Uganda who uh, came to Canada with his wife and he set up a not-for-profit to help immigrants settle in Canada, uh -huh. which is just so amazing. Or a veterinary technician who changed the regulatory people's minds and they allowed a mobile service to develop during the pandemic. And now she's got more than a thousand local customers. It's astounding. And there are many more. But I have a training program that tells people how to set up their business and grow it. So there are modules. And then we have coaching calls. And because I am a coach, that's one element that I was able to bring into that business that I, um, I had just before I developed cancer. And it's now online. And so that's very cool. So you do individual and group coaching? I do mostly group coaching because the other thing that I think is secret sauce is that when your community is consistently lovely and thoughtful about other people, it's a very strong community. And so the community is an important piece for us as well because people work together. They also support one another, whether I'm there or not to support them, which is a good thing. But I do, I do have individual clients too as well. Lovely. Tell us a little bit about what your biggest challenge has been as an entrepreneur. That is a really good question. My biggest challenge as an entrepreneur, I think being able to being able to have staying power when I have several reverses. So during the pandemic, many things changed and many things had to change in my mind as well. 
But one of the things that happens is, well, that didn't work. How come that didn't work? It worked before. So that applying old things, and when you do that transition from old things to new to trying new things, my biggest challenge has been maintaining the faith and just saying, we'll figure it out. We'll keep going. We'll figure it out. This is a really worthy thing to do. I know that I just have to learn something else. Okay. So keeping that kind of steady course. And what's your biggest challenge right now? Is there anything else that's been surfacing for you? Well, actually, one of the things, my, my husband, as I said, he has a, he has a blood-borne cancer. Uh, he's reacting to a chemo um, product that he's having, which he still has to have for another year and a half. And he's having a lot of pain. So one of the things that I'm trying to do is take things off his plate. Uh, and I've had the luxury of his having, you know, really contributed uh, to the behind the scenes things for me in the past because he's been retired for some time. So trying to make sure that I'm feeding us and the shopping gets picked up and, you know, all the mundane things. My husband's name is Rob and we have a, one of those vacuum robots now. And that was one of the things that we decided to do so that he wasn't going to do things he shouldn't be doing. And we call him Little Rob. <laughs> we should all make our lives easier. I'm a big fan. After living in the place where I now live for a year and a half, we've today for the first time had someone come in to help clean. And tonight my oh, husband nice. and I were looking around. We were like, wait, this is, this is nice. We should have done this a long time ago. So we're happy to give someone the business. Patricia's stories have really touched me. And so I offered her an intuitive reading in this session. Specifically, this is a quantum business reading. This is one of the woo things that I've started doing in the past few months and it's to help entrepreneurs see their business in the spiritual realm, specifically the quantum realm. Let me explain just a little bit more. The quantum realm is the place where all of the magic of our lives happens. It's those little tiny subatomic particles that exist outside of time and space. This is where all of our potentiality lies. When working with a client, I take a little peek at their business in this quantum realm, and together, we build the changes that they want to have happen in their business in the future and bring it into their present reality. I had spoken just a little bit about this on a casual group call that Patricia and I were both on a few weeks ago, and I saw a gleam in her eye that told me she might be interested. She asked if I was looking on anyone else to practice with, and here we are because I knew she would be a fantastic guest on Soul Savvy Business. An important thing to know about these intuitive readings is that they are very matter of fact and straightforward. There's no eyes rolling back in the back of my head. There's no altered state or trance state. It's simply me using all of my intuitive skills to see into the spiritual realm. Usually what happens is after a little bit of conversation, a picture forms in my head, often of a building that represents the business of the person with whom I'm speaking. This is just a representation, and then I begin to communicate with the client to see what kind of changes they want to make in the quantum realm. As with all things woo, one of the most important things that we can do is to tap very honestly into the feelings, because that will help create the reality that is coming into the present. This is really all about flow. To get started, I asked Patricia what some of her goals were for her business in the next six months. I think that's pretty easy. I'm at a place where my existing folks have been with me for about a year. So a lot of them are tailing down. So my goal in the next six months is to build a another cohort, which is probably, you know, up the size of about 20 to maybe 30 people. And I'm trying something new because there's two things I realized. One is that I actually have two um avatars, the ones who are just beginning and they need to set up their business, and then the ones who need to go on a longer process of growth. And so I'm splitting my course, actually, for the first time. And I'm just going to focus this month on starting up. So what does it take to start up and get your, your business established? And then I want to be able to launch the growth part a little uh, after, after that. Uh, and the second thing is that I attended um, one of those uh, community of practices on diversity. 
And there was a speaker there who talked about um, trauma-informed learning in the sense that those people with trauma have different responses to uh, anybody who's led a fairly smooth and even life. And it can be really um, interruptive of, of your ability to absorb and learn. So I am going to be investigating uh, the flourishing, uh, flourishing business ca- uh, model canvas as a way of structuring the business and really being mindful that this is something that people need to overcome. So when they're slow at developing something or when they're meeting resistance in their minds, it's often because of something that's happened in the past. So that was eye-opening for me. Cool. So developing really trauma-informed business coaching. Absolutely. And compassionate as well. So this is so interesting because the picture that started forming in my head when I thought there were only two goals, and then it turns out there's really three. I think you said two, but you really named three, which is build a cohort, try the two avatars, you know, two levels at once, newbies in growth, and then diversify with trauma, or not diversify, but maybe streamline with trauma-informed business coaching. And so the picture that has formed in my head and the quantum field are three like tall, round cylinder buildings. And they are completely, they're like onyx or steel. Like There's no windows or anything in them at all. And so I'm so curious because this is so, it doesn't look like I would, like I picture you or your business or your ethos at all, but I think that there's something else there. And so let's just kind of okay. keep let's just kind of keep on exploring. So it's these three like cylinder buildings, really tall, but they're very strong. So I don't mm-hmm. think that they're made of steel. I think that they're made of, you know, I said onyx, it could be like a dark crystal, like right. a dark Ooh. stone, something right. that's really like absorbent and very, very grounded. Like they feel they feel very grounded. Um, not heavy at all, but that that just like very grounded and like they can they can almost take in anything like we for instance we might wear crystals all right i have crystals in my pocket right now to help absorb negative energy and they help transmute energy and so i'm curious is ask for directions a company that transmutes negative energy we certainly try to do that because it doesn't get you anywhere if you're stuck in negative energy So I'm kind of feeling like the current challenge that you're facing, too, with just taking on a little bit more household. And that's not only physical and time, it's also emotional. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. And, you know, concern, of course, for your for your husband, um, that this we might need to lighten. Hmm. Interesting. This really grounded place that you're in, which is fantastic. I don't want I, I, I would not want anyone in this particular position that you're in to not be grounded. No, <laughs> it's just better. We don't want to get rid of that. We just want to balance it. And so, you know, with these three cylinder buildings, I'm just curious if you consider maybe putting something in the four corners. Yeah. In the four corners of the estate that they're on to help give it a little lightness and bring in a little bit of the um, ease to make this process just really easy. That would be lovely. Yeah. And so what would that be for you? Would it be a like greenery? Would it be another like crystals? Would it be maybe another kind of building or glass? Like what would that be in your own life that would? Well, greenery is something I love. I'm. Uh, we moved to the country so that we could be surrounded by trees and being in nature is really amazing because it does lighten. But somehow a rose quartz came into my mind. Okay. So I think maybe, and you're wearing the color of rose quartz right now. So listeners, we can see each other. We know you can't see us, but Mm -hmm. Patricia is wearing a pink shirt right now. So it is a little darker than rose quartz, but in the family. So it may be worthwhile for you to um, get a rose quartz and just charge it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with that ease and, and flow to help keep that energy going. And actually, I think what I see is you putting that rose quartz energy right in the center of those three buildings, like in the ground where they would oh, all wow. meet. Cool. Rather than on the edges. I used to wear rose quartz all the time. And why were you wearing it? What would it do for you? I think it would channel energy. Honestly, it was something that was incredibly positive. You know, when you try crystals or you, you look at different rocks and things and you hold them in your hands, that produced energy. The rose quartz produced energy for me. 
Okay, so I think this rose quartz, it was like, I can feel this changing the field. And there was not anything negative in the field. It was just feeling so grounded that it needs a little, like putting that rose quartz energy in the middle (laughs) of your quantum field, I think is going to help keep it generating. I want to go and find it right now. I will wait. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and so the nice thing, yes, definitely get the physical object that will assist. Um, but you're actually doing it with your own energy. Like you're doing it right now, right? Like you're bringing in that energy. And then I think the trees are going to be on the exterior. And like you don't need a lot. You just need a few. Yes, probably the trees with a few squirrels because they're always very amusing. So <laughs> I love that. So bringing in that laughter, bringing in that lightness, bringing in those kind of animals, I, I think is all really helpful because what just happened in my, the visual in my mind was that people started to appear. Oh, cool. Like before this was like, an, not empty, but like I, at least I wasn't seeing the people, but like now that brings in people like looking at the squirrels, laughing at the squirrels. It brings in those heart centered people. Cause of course they're going to be attracted to both the groundedness and the rose quartz. Yeah, they will. I think that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the more Roombas you can bring into your life, the better. <laughs> Throw a few hundred dollars at this, make it go away. Absolutely. If we could just figure out how to do that with cooking. But I'll tell you what else is on my mind is snow shoveling. We have a neighbor who just offered to do all of our snow shoveling. Out of the blue, just drove his big honking tractor up and cleared Aww. our driveway in seconds. I stood at the edge of our garage and I blew him two kisses. It was like, thank you, thank you. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So generous. Yeah. That's been challenging is the heaviness of the responsibility, trying to juggle the responsibilities. So Mm -hmm. when you talk about lightness, that really resonates with me. So thank you. This is lovely. You're welcome. Yeah. So I think for you bringing in, again, that rose quartz energy, and you can do it with a tangible rose quartz, but it really happens in your meditation and in your visualization. So you can bring it if this picture resonates with you, but make it your own. Okay. It was really fun for me to get to offer Patricia this intuitive reading where we go into the quantum world to explore her business. You heard us talk about crystals. I really had no idea beforehand that she liked crystals at all. So this was a really fun discovery for both of us. It may not have occurred to you to bring in some of these spiritual tools into your personal life or into your business. If you're in a pretty traditional business setting, you might not want clients seeing cards and crystals or thinking of you in that woo way. But on the other hand, you might. These are tools, they're not magic wands, to assist you with your energy. The more that we can explore tools that resonate with us, not to solve problems, but to help master our energy and connect to the spiritual realms, the more fun that we can have in business and in spirituality. After all, that's what Soul Savvy Business is all about, bridging business and spirituality. If you're interested in your own quantum reading, I do have these available as a standalone service. We will put the link in the show notes, or you can just go to soulsavvybusiness.com to find out more. Well, thank you for allowing me to see this beautiful vision of your wonderful business. I I just love being able to um, tap into that energy. Any questions? No, I feel like you are spot on when you're talking about all of these things. And I've just appreciated talking with you. This has been great. Oh, good. (laughs) Well, in light of what we've just talked about, what do you kind of see as your next steps spiritually, you know, in life or in business? Well, certainly in life, and it makes a difference in business. I want to increase my meditation. That's something I know that feeds my soul. Because with business, if I'm balanced, and I'm, you know, calm, everything works. If I'm not, Everything is harder, and I think more people need to realize that. That sounds awesome. And I, you you are an experienced meditator, so you know what to do there. And actually, when you said that, what I saw is like your meditation goes to that rose quartz energy, oh, and wow. then that goes to the black tap cylinders buildings. And that's the correct order. All right. Like, starts so with you being grounded, sends it to that heart center, and then that sends it to your business, right? It's, it's, um, it's that's going to amplify the work of your business so you don't have to do so much. Wouldn't that be great? That would be lovely. 
Yeah. I mean, you still have tasks, you know. But the nice thing about those, the, especially that dark material of the buildings, is that it holds energy when you don't have to, just like when the sun beats on a rock and it'll be warm even after sunset. Yeah. So you just want it to be that calm, meditative energy. I really do. That would be lovely. But you already are doing. So this is just going to zing it forward a little bit more. Okay. That sounds wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. Um, well, this is, yeah, thank you. This is so exciting. Well, as we're wrapping up, Patricia, do you have any advice or wisdom you'd like to share with the listeners? You know, one of the reasons I called the training course Ask for Directions is actually that I believe if we put up our hands and ask questions and rely on our community, we do much better than if we try and figure it out all by ourselves. So I would just encourage people to connect with their fellow community members and ask for help if they need it. I love that because as humans, we're really not designed to be lone wolves. No, we are not. This is so great, Patricia. I'm so excited about all your work and your experiences. And thank you for being here. What's the best way for people to find you? Probably by email. Um, if do you want, or do you want me to... Lay it on us. Okay. Patricia, P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A, at growvantage.com. And that's grow as in grow. So growvantage.com. And we'll make sure it's in the show notes. Oh, well, that would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you. Thanks for allowing me to do this unusual um, style coaching, but not unusual for you who's been around the spiritual block. I'm Katie Valentine, and you've been listening to Soul Savvy Business. Soul Savvy Business is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes shows such as Just Between Coaches and Once Upon a Business. This episode was produced by Cynthia Lamp. I wrote this episode with Melissa Deal and Cynthia. Melissa Deal assembled the episode. Danny Eney is our executive producer, and post-production was by Post Office Sound. To make sure you don't miss great episodes coming up on Soul Savvy Business, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. If you like the show, please give us a star review. It is the best way to help us get these ideas out there to more people. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.